Good afternoon, peeps. Um, so this is um, quite a different video to what I've normally done. Um, unfortunately, there's not going to be any cycling or running or anything going on today. Um, I wanted to do a quick video about um, the operation that I had last week and um, give you a quick idea as to what that involved, why I had it, and um, what that means for me kind of going forward, really. Um, so, and I'll, and I'll try and be quick and get this in under 10 minutes. Um, I have written, a, a write an online blog, um, and I have written quite a detailed blog about, um, or three blogs in fact, about this whole experience. So if you're more interested uh, or would like to know more details, um, then please do have a look at that. Um, I think for me to explain that in a, in a blog, it's probably going to take me about an hour. So, um, yeah, I'll try and keep this short and sweet. But I will put a link in the description below to um, to the to the blogs about um, the last week. Um, basically, what I had done was a septoplasty, um, which isn't to be confused with a rhinoplasty. Um, a rhinoplasty is effectively a nose job and generally tends to be cosmetic. Septoplasty is um, an operation on this cartilage in between the septum, which is the cartilage in between your nostrils. Um, and the reason I had that done is because I had a deviated septum, um, something that I've probably had all my life. And coincidentally, I had an MRI on my head in 2010, and I even noticed then the, the bend in my septum. Um, didn't think any more of it because actually it never caused me a problem until a couple of years ago. Probably the reason why, um, well, I, I don't know why it started necessarily, but um, a couple of years ago I started to get a lot of inflammation in my sinuses and was starting to get quite a lot of sinusitis. And um, essentially, that and in and enlarged sinuses in there was causing my right nostril to become quite blocked a lot of the time, um, and that meant I was getting a lot of sinus infections. Um, and of course, uh, being on immune suppressants for my Crohn's disease meant that I couldn't fight the infections. So I have had uh, recurrent infections in my sinuses and in my ears um, probably for the last 18 months, and. Certainly it feels like this year I've probably had more time on antibiotics than I have off. Um, so all in all it's been making me feel pretty rubbish. Um, so yeah, they decided they would operate. Um, it obviously won't uh, help with the inflammation and the mucus side of things, but it will help everything to drain properly, so hopefully I won't get so many infections. Um, so yeah, that's what I had done last week. Um, if, if any of you are looking to have this operation um, as I say the detail really is in in my blog um, but do expect to probably have when you come around some kind of packs in your nostrils I certainly did um, and so you basically can't breathe through your nose while you've got those in and frankly although they take them out before you leave hospital um, you can't breathe very much through them afterwards or you can't breathe very much through your nose afterwards anyway um, because of all the blood and stuff that's in there um, so and for me um, I I don't do mouth breathing so for about 48 hours um, I was really quite uncomfortable because I couldn't breathe very much through my nose at all and I know that first the first night after the operation was a long long night um, so yeah just be prepared for that um, be prepared obviously for quite a bit of pain um, and quite a bit of swelling and um, yeah I think just just to be quite uncomfortable really for a few days so um, it's still a little bit uncomfortable now and there's still a bit of swelling inside um, it's a bit like having a bit of a head cold but I'm pleased to say after about 48 hours I'll explain the details but everything started to move and I was then able to kind of breathe through my nose again um, quick little tip um, in terms of my sort of um, emergency kit that's got me through this week um, rubbing alcohol and cotton buds has been a lifesaver um, the first morning that I woke up um, again I'll spare you the gory details but both my nostrils are pretty plugged with blood and clots and all sorts so these help to clear, clear things up um, obviously just very very gently um, and as a little side note, I had been worrying all week that I've been chucking away loads of plastic. But well done Tesco, um, environmentally friendly paper stems, so there's not actually any plastic in these. So that makes me feel um, 
slightly more at ease that I've not been filling the landfill with them um, with plastic because I think I've got through two and a half boxes of those this week. There's 200 in a box, so um, you know, yeah. Um, they also gave me um, so this is all prescription stuff now, but they gave me an antihistamine spray, um, obviously to try and rinse out and to shrink the blood vessels um, and um, a nasal cream again on prescription um, that's like a, an antibiotic or antiseptic I'm not sure um, so I've been obviously plastering my nostrils with that using the cotton buds um, I found after about three days things started to dry up a little bit but because of the swelling I felt like the skin around my nose was kind of stretching and getting quite dry so um, and I've got some bepanthin hanging around um, this stuff's awesome I mean it's good for babies bums obviously um, but I've actually had this um, for new tattoos it's brilliant on new tattoos um, but I shoved a load of that on my nose on the outside and you know it worked a treat so that certainly helped um, and the final thing, which is something I've been using quite a lot, probably in the last year, is this sinus rinse bottle. Um, it's, it takes a bit of getting used to, but basically you make up this um, saline rinse and pop it against one nostril and squeeze gently and the water goes through the sinuses and back out the other nostril. Um, so say it takes a bit of getting used to, it's a bit weird at first. Um, but my god it feels nice I mean when you're all clogged up and everything it really helps to clear stuff out um, so I was using that as well for well, probably after three or four days and I've been using that a few times a day just to kind of just keep washing stuff out really so um, so that's really helped um, and I'm pleased to say that although I've still got a way to go I mean I still need to be careful of the infection and things um, and even though there's still quite a lot of swelling and stuff in there, I, my right nostril, compared to how it was before, it feels like I can fit gallons and gallons of air through there now. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that it's really done the trick and uh, hopefully will solve things going forward, really. Um, unfortunately, because of the operation, I have been told I can't exercise for four weeks. Um, so if anyone's out there who was, wants to come and take my turbo trainer for a while, um, <laughs> please do because um, I'm quite worried about it being in the house. The temptation is there and, um, and I know I, I can't do anything for four weeks. Um, joking aside, I'm going to use the time to really get back into the Pilates and, and kind of a bit more strength work. Um, that's something that's really taken a back seat since I've been so busy doing swimming and cycling and running and god knows what else um, and it shouldn't do I mean that's that's what's allowed me to be able to do the things that I can do now with my back so um, yeah I know my spine will certainly thank me for it so I'm certainly going to concentrate on that in the next well I've been off a week now uh, in the next three weeks and um, and try and work on my glutes and my quads and my calves and just try and keep the strength in the legs really so I don't lose too much in the next few weeks um, but obviously there has an implication for my fundraising so um, I coincidentally hadn't got anything actually earmarked for September um, I had got my eye on a triathlon um, which I obviously now won't be doing um, and not that I would have been able to train for it now but the 10k run I was planning to do in October has been cancelled um, so I think I, although I haven't decided 100% um, I think I'm probably going to look to defer my September and my October challenges to next year. Um, so I'll, I will find some things to do to finish off my fundraising challenges. Um, but I just feel like, although I probably could find something I could do later on in the year, um, I'm not going to be at full strength probably still. And I don't want to rush it, I don't want to risk any injuries. And so I think I'm, probably the sensible thing to do would be to just spend the next few months now getting my fitness back up and my strength back up and then hit next year running really literally um I have got some things I would like to do next year I'd like to tick off the list um I certainly want to get around to that all elusive 10k run um I've never done before um I would also like to tick off the century ride um I think I might have said it on Strava or Facebook or something but I know it's out there now in writing um, that I said I would do the century next year so um, so obviously I would like to do that um, 
I'd like to also do an open water swim. That's something that fills me with absolute dread. Um, but after having done the swimathon this year, um, I'd certainly like to give that a go and tick that off the list. And then to just carry on really with the triathlon, I think I've um, I've really got the bug this year. So uh, yeah, I'd quite like to do that next year as well. But but we'll see. I mean, it's all up in the air at the moment. It's still very very early days. I still don't know how I'm gonna how my recovery is gonna continue. It's been a bit of a rough week to be honest. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, and I think I just lastly wanted to kind of give a bit of a shout out to a couple of fellow vloggers um, and something uh, it's about a subject that's been close to my heart particularly this week um, around anxiety so um, obviously I've been catching up on some vlogs now while I've been off and uh, Mark Frost and Tarmac Softy have both put videos up recently about their experiences of anxiety and mental health and, and how cycling helps with that and um, firstly hats off to you guys um, it's brilliant that we've got that conversation going and I know there's so many people out there that suffer with anxiety or other mental health issues and we none of us talk enough about this stuff um, the more and more and more we talk about it the more we will normalize it and the less stigmatized it will be so, you know, hats off to you guys for doing that. Um, I have suffered with anxiety for a few years and it's been particularly pervasive for me this week um, because of the things, um, because of the surgery, because of the few complications I had after surgery. Um, as I say, it's all in my blog, um, but I have been on tender hooks all week. There's been panic attack after panic attack and, you know, it's just really, really crap sometimes. So. I wanted to kind of just acknowledge that. Um, I think I will actually do a separate video on my experience of mental health anyway, um, just to keep that conversation going. Um, but as Tarmac Softy said in his one of his videos, you know, it's not all ice cream and candy. And so I'm sorry if this video has been a bit on the boring side, but um, you know, I always just wanted to catch you up on what's been going on. And you know, it hasn't all been ice cream and candy. Um, there's been lots of elements this year with my health that haven't been great um, so yeah I just wanted to acknowledge that and I think um, you know that's something that I'm actually very guilty of anyway in my videos and, and one example that springs to mind is the tour ride where I was meant to give Mark the video for the last leg after the, the last right at the last feed stop but because I was at that point in total meltdown I didn't give him the camera because I didn't want people to see me at my weak point and I really regret that now um, in hindsight I think people should see that um, I think we should all be quite open and honest about you know how things are going for us if, if it's all about the good stuff then how can people kind of relate to that you know it's great seeing the good stuff but people want to see the bad stuff as well I think and interestingly I, I get far fewer reactions to the blogs where it's all like yeah this girl can I did this and I did that and everything's awesome when I start to talk a bit more about the real stuff that's when it goes wrong when I'm having a meltdown people react to that a lot better and so I think people do want that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I know I'm very much guilty of just showing the good stuff. Um, so I will certainly um, make a vow to you now that I will be showing the not so good stuff as well on the way. Um, and yeah, this, this my health issue is, is one of that, you know, that is one facet of that. Um, you know, I'm not that healthy. My Crohn's isn't that great. I have back problems, I've got to go in for some more injections in my back in a few weeks time, you know, I've got to have another colonoscopy in a few weeks time to check my Crohn's, is it okay, and, you know, obviously all this malarkey with my sinuses and stuff as well, plus all the mental health side of things, and I'm also having tests for arthritis or whatever is going on with my hands and my fingers and my shoulders and stuff, so, and I'm not saying this to get sympathy, I don't want that, I just want people to realise, actually, I, you know, we're not, we're not all superhumans. I'm certainly a, a relatively normal, whatever normal is, 
human being, um, I am just trying to get as strong and as fit as I can and get some enjoyment out of riding my bike or going for a run or whatever. And the whole point of these vlogs really is to try and share that experience so that people, particularly women, I'm not aiming at the men, but you know, I am part of the This Girl Can campaign, um, you know, show people that you don't have to be superhuman to be able to go out and do those things, you know. Um, we've all got our failings and our flaws and if you can just get out there and enjoy yourself then that's the main thing. So I think I'm probably going to leave it there. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, as I say, I'll put the links to um, to the other vlogs that Mark Frost and Nige have done. As I said, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me on, I don't even know how many minutes of me rambling at you it's taken. I blame the codeine, frankly. Um, yeah, so as I'm going to be um, knocking around the house, not being able to exercise for the next few weeks, um, I'm finally going to get around to doing some of the other videos I've been promising, in particular the one around the saddle fit um, that I mentioned, I don't know how many months ago now, um, and update you on that and the creepy saddle post. Um, I've got a couple of ideas as well that I'm sort of working on, so um, yeah, watch out for those. They'll hopefully be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, until then, um, just keep getting out there, keep enjoying yourselves. Um, and stay safe and I'll see you again soon.